Okay, hello everybody. I am Steve Winters. I am your instructor for Linguistics 201 this semester. Uh, and I'm just making a short video to start things off with um, to try to describe to you how this class is going to work uh, in fall of 2022. So uh, it's been a while since I made one of these videos and it's actually been even longer since I've been in the classroom to teach this class. The last day I still have it in my mind was March 11th, 2020. We're uh, in September of 2022 now, and the world has changed since then. So my class has changed a bit as well. So my goal for today is to walk you through um, how the website works for this class and what the course syllabus says about it, because the way this course is going to operate this year is that it's going to be both in person and online. So during the pandemic, everything shifted online, and I created a lot of materials for that. Uh, purpose um, and didn't do anything in person. So I still have those materials available and I want to use them sort of to supplement or maybe just be in lieu of an in-person class experience uh, for this fall semester. So before I get ahead of myself, um, let me just talk to you about the basics. So my name is Steve Winters. Uh, as I've said before, here's how you can get in touch with me. Um, I've been teaching this class actually for uh, quite a while now. I've been at Calgary for 15 years and I taught intro a few times before that as well. Um, mostly as a researcher, uh, my research focuses on phonetics and speech perception. Um, if you're more curious about that, you can go on in linguistics and take some of my classes in phonetics as well. Um, but for the time being, if you wanna get in touch with me, there's a variety of ways to do it. Um, you can uh, send me an email uh, at swinters at ucalgary.ca. Uh, and I will mention this, I put this on sort of the more formal syllabus that I presented um, to our school director, but email uh, can get overwhelming pretty easily uh, during the semester. So if you do email me, um, it may take me a while to get back in touch with you. And for that reason, it's totally okay for you to email me more than once about the same topic and just give me a reminder that I, I won't be offended at all about that because I totally understand how it can get frustrating on your end if somebody doesn't respond right away. But with that in mind, uh, I will actually say that it's often easier to get a response from me um, about something that concerns you if you just talk to me in person. And so I am making myself available in person, both during class time and in office hours during the semester. So if you want to visit office hours, um, I'm going to be in my lab, uh, which is in Education Classrooms 259. And um, that's going to take place on Tuesdays from 1.30 to 2.30. And I'm also going to be available on Zoom at the same time. Uh, so like I said, everything's going to be in person and online for this course. So the Zoom link for office hours is here. Uh, there's no password for it or anything. Just log on and you should be able to see my smiling face. There may be a waiting room, though. You might have to wait while I talk to somebody in person or else somebody else who's on the Zoom link as well. Uh, so during those times, um, you can also try calling me on the phone. That's probably the only time I'm ever going to answer this phone number. Uh, but you can give that a shot as well from Tuesdays uh, from 1.30 to 2.30. If you would rather not talk to me about anything concerning the class. Uh, you can also talk to one of the teaching assistants for the class there are two, um, both grad students in the linguistics program here. Uh, the first is Francisco Gonzalez. Uh, he uh, has his contact information here and his office hours are on Fridays from 2.30 to 3.30. Um, I still need to get information exactly about where the TAs are gonna hold their office hours, but they will be in person. The other TA is another um, grad student in our program, Cheryl Iwanchuk. Uh, Cheryl also um, comes from our undergraduate program as well, so she knows this class pretty well. She's been a past instructor for it as well. I'll explain to you what that means in a second, uh, but you can get in touch with her um, either by email or by office hours, and her office hours are gonna be on Wednesdays from 9.30 to 10.30. So we have office hour options on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Wednesdays. We're here for you in case you have questions about anything, so feel free to make use of that resource, um, especially if you're struggling with this class or have any concerns about it. Um, we can also meet outside of scheduled office hours by appointment if you would like, uh, depending on availability, so please request those appointments by email, and we will try as best we can to get back to you as soon as we can. For the in-person version of this class, the lectures are going to take place on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 1 to 150 over in Science Theater's uh, 141. Uh, my, my child is yelping in the background. I don't know what's going on. Uh, hopefully <laughs> she won't burst in here, but you never know. Um, anyways, uh, 
again, kind of getting ahead of myself. These are just the practical details of how we're going to run the class. But the course, what is this about? So this is Introduction to Linguistics 1. Um, some of you out there may have a sense of what linguistics is. Some of you may have a general interest in languages. Others of you may have no idea what linguistics is. Uh, so the course description tries to give you a sense of where we're heading with this. But the course is int an introduction to the theory and methodology of linguistics, which is the scientific study of language. Students will learn about the primary branches and applications of linguistics, phonetics, phonology, morphology, morphology, syntax, and semantics, while exploring the complex nature of human language from biological and social perspectives. The course looks at knowledge of language as a core element of human cognition and provides students with the analytical tools and practice necessary to develop basic skills for understanding the structure and lang of language and linguistic data. Uh, so if you want a simple answer about the what this course is about, it's the scientific study of language. Um, we're going to look at language scientifically and learn the basic tools we need to do that. Um, course outcomes. Students who successfully complete this course will be able to transcribe the to, will be able to transcribe the contrastive sounds of English, and analyze the hidden structure of complex words, speech sounds, and sentences. They will also acquire a basic understanding of how languages compose meaning through the combination of words into phrases and sentences, and how speakers can use utterances in speech acts. Uh, so there's a lot of territory we cover, and it's all fun. Um, students will also gain a deeper understanding of how language fits into the natural world, how it changes over time, and how both biological and social forces make it a uniquely human phenomenon. Okay, um, we'll talk more about the details about how all this works as we go through the class. So I'm not going to focus on that today. Instead, I'm going to focus more on the nuts and bolts of what we're going to do. So like I said before, the material for this course will be delivered both in an in-person and an asynchronous online format. We will meet in person three times a week during the regularly scheduled class times for the course, as I mentioned above, Monday, Wednesday, Friday afternoons. Um, these in-person sessions will follow the traditional university class format, wherein I will deliver lecture material and also occasionally lead the class through sets of practice exercises that are based on material which has been presented during previous lectures. There will typically be two lecture sessions a week and one session a week devoted to working through practice exercises. Um, and if I skip ahead here to the schedule for the course, which is at the tail end of this syllabus, um, I'll give you an example of how this works. So our first unit um, in terms of technical uh, details of how language works is going to be about morphology, which is the study of word structure. So that particular week, which starts on the 19th of September, we have two lectures about morphology, one on word structure, one on derivations. And then on the Friday, we talk about practice exercises. So we don't have a lecture that day, but we work through um, problem sets that I will expect you to do for the morphology homework, which is going to be due on Monday, October 3rd. Um, and it works similarly uh, for the other units. If we can, we get a practice exercise in there and usually it's preceded by a couple of different lectures. It's just not always exactly gonna have practice exercises on Friday and lectures on Monday and Wednesday, but generally speaking, that's how it's gonna work. Um, I'm gonna mention something else now that I'm thinking about it with my child, um, still kind of yelping in the background, but she goes to a specialized school um, which meets uh, beginning at 1240 uh, and it's on the west end of campus. Uh, so uh, it's my job to get her over there uh, by 1240 uh, and then uh, sometimes drop-offs go more smoothly than others. She's only three years old. Uh, so I have a class at Monday, Wednesday and Friday, our class at uh, 1 p.m. So I may actually be a few minutes late on some lecture days or on some any meeting days. Uh, so uh, if that's the case, please be, please be patient um, and I will be there, but it may wind up being the case that class starts at like 103 or 105 or something like that. Okay, that again is for the in-person version of the class. There's also an online version of the class where it's asynchronous, so we don't have to worry about being places on time. Uh, so for the online domain, I have made video recordings of all the lectures for the course and posted them to YouTube. So this is something that I accomplished during the pandemic when I was here all on my own. Uh, links to these videos will be posted on the course webpage listed below, along with links to the corresponding notes for each lecture. Um, so this webpage is right here. It's the course website, um, and I've got it linked up here on my web browser. So we'll take a look at it here in a second. Um, but uh, in addition to the links to lecture videos, there are also videos for each set of practice homework exercises, which I'll also post once we have discussed those practice exercises in person in class. So just so you can see how this works, um, there's a D2L site for this course, which I have here, uh, but I'm basically not going to use this D2L site basically at all for this course. 
Um, I've posted, sorry, this is the course home. I've posted in under content, the course syllabus, which is the document we're looking at right here. Uh, and then on the course home, there's a link to this other course website, which you've already seen. Uh, but that's basically to discourage anybody from looking to the D2L site for any sort of information because it's all going to be up on this particular website right here. Uh, there's reasons I do that, which is mainly about how I can kind of control the information behind the scenes. Um, it's a lot easier for me to do that on my own personal website than it is on D2L. So I just avoid using D2L altogether and you should too. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, during the pandemic, there were a few students who I think expected there to be more on D2L than there was, and they got very frustrated about the content of the course when they didn't look at this webpage at all. So I'm just going to try to keep this the content on this D2L site basically to zero. Uh, so don't go there. Bookmark this link. Do whatever you need to do to be able to find it. Um, and this is where you will find what you need for the course. So like I said, um, there are going to be lecture notes posted here. So I've got a few sort of just example links for the first day of class here um, in case you want to see how this works. So I've got uh, lecture notes both in P uh, PowerPoint format and also in PDF format. Uh, so, you know, episode one, what is linguistics, so on and so forth is what we'll talk about on the first day. Language is a scientific study of language or linguistics is a scientific study of language, so on and so forth. There's also um, video lectures. And if you click on this link, you'll see it'll go to YouTube. Um, and yeah, OK, so unfortunately, uh, there are uh, ads now on YouTube. When I started my YouTube account, I uh, okay. was able to set it so that there were no ads because I just am not interested in that whole money making part of it. Um, and they've kind of just foisted ads upon me. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that, but you know, usually it's five seconds of your time. So hopefully that isn't too annoying, but otherwise you get to watch what I have to say about the lectures. Uh, um, and this is going to be in sort of the exact same format you're watching right now. Um, I'll give you any, I'll show you as well. Uh, here's, um, some practice exercises that we'll talk about in class. You can access, uh, access those through this link. Um, and there will be also practice exercise video links like here. And this will also spit you out into a YouTube link, um, such as this one. And we'll talk about the details for that in class. And also you can watch the exact same walkthrough, um, on YouTube if you like. Um, I think that's all I've got for now. Uh, there's also a handouts link, which gives you the course syllabus, um, that we're walking through at the moment. So everything will be up here. Um, you don't need to go anywhere else for any information about the class. Just bookmark that link and you'll be good to go. So since all of the relevant materials for the course will be available both in person and online, attendance at in-person classes is not required and you may simply choose to access the course materials in whatever modality you prefer. Um, so yeah, I think something we learned over the pandemic is that some people actually do um, better online or they may want to just study online for whatever reason. I know a lot of you would rather be in person, so we're still going to do in person. And for that, you get the benefit of all the interaction between, you know, students and instructor. Uh, but at this point, um, since I have both all the materials necessary to do it online, I'm just going to do that anyways. And you can choose. So I, you can learn everything you need to know to complete the course by reading the textbook and watching all the videos I have posted online. And alternatively, you can access the same information by attending the class sessions in person. You may also take advantage of both modalities by attending classes in person and then reviewing videos of the lectures or practice exercise online afterwards. Or, you know, I got a message from somebody who told me they're going to miss the first day of class. I'm like, okay, you're not really going to miss anything if you um, want to take the time to watch the video. So it's up there if you need it for either supplementing the material we talk about in class or just replacing it for a class session or two. You can do it either way. That's fine. But if you do attend classes in person, then I will ask you to be present and attentive to what's going on in class that day. In other words, I will ask you to set aside your cell phones and any other distracting devices and focus on the material that we are discussing or that I am presenting. Um, this was a problem that was becoming increasingly worse before the pandemic hit was that a lot of people would just stare at their phones or whatever throughout the class period. Um, for whatever reason, I know that lectures can go on and it's hard to stay focused on them for long periods of time, but playing around with your cell phones or whatever you're doing online, um, 
is not really beneficial to learning either for you or for anybody else. So basically, I'm hoping that if you'd rather be online, just be online and don't come to class. And if you want to be in class, then be in class. Uh, and so we'll get everybody sort of in the right spot that way uh, and not distracting anybody else or themselves and just focusing on learning. So if it is too difficult for you to stay focused on that material in an in-person learning environment, then I recommend that you access that material at home, online, so that you won't be a distraction to your fellow classmates in person. <clears throat> so that's what I'm gonna ask you in lieu of yelling at you about your cell phone in class, basically. So let's stick to that principle, uh, and I think everybody will be happier. Um, I've talked at length about this course website through which this is all gonna work. Um, there's a few other things on it that I haven't mentioned yet. One is that there's a link here that will enable you to check your grades um, on the course webpage. Uh, and this hasn't been update, uh, updated, obviously, for this course, but um, there's going to be a date that I list along with this check grades feature, um, which uh, I will change whenever, whenever I've updated grades to the website so that you'll know if anything new is on there. Um, this is uh, rudimentary at this point because nobody's done any work for this uh, semester right now. Uh, I've got kind of a um, just a back end um, password I can submit for myself so you can see how it works. But basically, uh, there's totals down at the bottom, but up here I'll list every single individual exercise that you do and your score on them, um, and then total it for you down here uh, so you can figure out what your grade is as you go through the class. It's a really simple, um, kind of easy way to work, and that's also one reason why I use this course website is because it's easier for me to upload grades this way than it is to upload them on D2L. Okay, so speaking of all that, your final grade is going to be based on four different components to the class. Uh, so the first is homework exercises, <coughs> of which there will be five, um, and they're worth 30% of your grade. There are two exams, a midterm and a final, each of which is worth 30%. And then there's also something called quick writes, uh, which are worth 10%. Um, so uh, these are a feature that I picked up along the way. Um, as I learned how to teach this course. And uh, kind of, I think they were originally designed to make sure that people would show up to class and be able to think about what they were learning that day. Uh, again, things have evolved over time, so they're gonna work slightly differently in this version of the class because they need to be online as well as in person. So quick writes are short problem solving and writing assignments that are gonna be due at the beginning of class on most lecture days. So in the old days, uh, what I would do is I would print out a quick write on a piece of paper for you, basically some, some problem for you to solve that was about what we we're going to talk about that day. And then you'd all spend five minutes just writing out an answer to it. Uh, I'm not going to do that anymore because I've learned how not to do that. Um, so that means that you need to do the quick write before you come to class that day. Um, so the content of the quick write assignment will be based on prior class discussion and readings assigned for that date. These assignments will be given full credit if submitted by the beginning of the class period, <coughs> and no late submissions will be accepted. So to give you a sense of how this is going to work and what these things look like, uh, we can go to the quick write link here on the course website. Uh, and this very first one is called a class census. Uh, this is not really linguistically related that much. It's just about who you are, what you're studying, where do you come from, what languages do you speak, so on and so forth, because it is linguistics, and I want to know a little bit about what you know about language. Uh, what other linguistic courses you've taken? This is very simple. Um, this is kind of the easiest uh, quick write for you to fill out, just basically what you know about yourself and what you can tell me about yourself. Um, but what I want you to do is fill this out, uh, ideally before a class. I'm going to give, for this particular quick write, because you don't know how the course works, I'm going to give you a little bit of leeway on this one. Um, but basically fill this out before class begins, and I'll give you credit for doing this quick write. Uh, the other quick writes will be about something regarding language, some problem to solve with language or some you know, philosophical question about uh, how language works and fits into the, the natural world. Uh, all you need to do is give me some sort of response before class begins in order to get credit for the quick write. Uh, if you don't do that, <coughs> you don't get any credit for the quick write. There are no late submissions that are going to be accepted because I want you to be thinking about this as we go. If you're doing the entire class online, you can do all of these quick writes online. Just submit them by that deadline of when the class would normally meet in person. Um, yeah, so it's synchronous to that extent, I guess you could say. Excuse me. 
Um, and then to submit it, you just um, put in your last name and your ID number. So I'm just going to um, put in some filler answers here. Uh, and when you do it um, and submit your answers, it'll tell you, you know, what answers you submitted just to kind of confirm that you get credit for it. And that's it. Um, over the entire semester, I think they're going to be 25 or 26 of these. I can't remember exactly how many, but if you miss five, let's say there's 25 total quick writes, you only can be complete 20. <clears throat> then you lose two percentage points from this 10% of your grade. So you'd get 8% credit for the quick writes. Um, so that's quite a lot of leeway. And it would only go down to six if you um, miss 10 total. So if you submitted 15 and miss 10, then it goes down to 6%. But if you miss nine, and complete 16, you're still at that 8% level. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been a while since I've spoken so long. Anyways, uh, so you can miss up to four without missing anything. And this gives you some leeway. So um, it also gives me a bit of a leeway, in, a little bit of leeway in grading too. So like if you miss a class, if you miss one of these deadlines uh, and can't do the quick write on time, uh, you don't need to come to me and say, oh, can I make up that quick write? Because the answer is no. There are no late submissions accepted. Uh, just do the next one um, and just make sure you don't miss more than four, right? That's a lot of, you know, wiggle room to work with there. Uh, but ba basically that's how that system works. Um, and that also puts us into sort of the mindset where we think about some specific phenomenon in language that uh, kind of will set the table for what we're going to talk about in class that day. If you are um, either um, attending in person or going to watch the upcoming lecture video about that topic. Okay, I'm not going to say anything further about that, but if you have questions, let me know. Uh, homeworks provide you with an opportunity to apply the knowledge and analytic skills learned during the weekly lectures and discussion, discussion sections. <clears throat> Five homeworks will be assigned throughout the course of the semester. And I've got due dates down here in the uh, course schedule. Uh, we don't really get rolling until about week five, but then they're about every couple of weeks or so for a while. And then uh, there's two that kind of bunch up here at the tail end. Um, there's five of these, uh, each um, sort of dedicated to one of the units we cover in class. Um, homeworks will generally be posted on the course website about a week before they are due. Uh, and kind of crucially, again, for in terms of wiggle room, your lowest homework score will be dropped in calculating your final grade. So you could miss one altogether and that one wouldn't count. Um, but a missed homework counts as zero points. So everything counts for the other four that you submit or however many you do submit, do submit. By the same token, I'm not accepting late homework for credit because you do get a little bit of wiggle room there. Just get the homeworks in on time. <clears throat> because uh, I am doing this online, um, what I want to make clear, and actually I'm, I'm going to add this into the syllabus here. I think I meant to do that, but somehow that got missed. Uh, but the homework exercises will be posted here in some form, either a PDF uh, that you can, well, well, there's a couple of forms. There will be either a form you can fill out uh, online, like through Microsoft Word or something like that, or just through your website itself. Um, I need to do some, you know, technical work on behind the scenes in order to make this all work. But you will be able to submit this either directly through this website, or if it comes to that, you will there will be a Dropbox on D2L that you can submit it through. Since I'm trying to move away from D2L, I want to be able to do this all online, but I haven't got quite gotten there yet. Uh, but for the cases where you can't do it directly through this website, there will be a Dropbox on D2L. I will make this clear when I actually post the homeworks, um, how exactly you will submit them. Um, yeah. Uh, that's how you'll access them. There will also be a midterm and a final exam, which will work kind of similarly to the homeworks, but there are some other technical details about those you need to know. Both of the exams will be administered online and will be open book. And once I make them available, I will email you with specific information on how to access those exams. Uh, there will be specific links that will not be listed either on D2L or um, on this website. You will simply get them in your emails and we'll go from there. The midterm is going to include a timed component that will last for two hours and will be available within a 24 hour window. So that 24 hour window will take place on Monday, October 25th. So beginning at 12.01 in the morning, 
on Monday, October 24th, this exam will become available. There will be a link in your inbox and in your email. If you click on that link, you could start working on the exam if you want to. However, once you start working on that exam, you have to start it and submit it within two hours. Uh, so if you start the exam at 12.01 that morning, you have to complete it by 2.01 that morning. You could wait and say, I want to start it at 10.30 at night. Um, that's fine. You're still within that 24-hour window for starting it, but then you'd have to complete it by 12.30 you know, the, in the morning the following day. So you get two hours to complete the exam. If you start it at 3 in the afternoon, you have to complete it by 5. But you just have to start it within that 24-hour window and complete it within two hours once you start it. Hopefully that makes sense. We'll talk about that more as well once the time comes uh, during the semester. The final exam works in a similar fashion. It's also gonna be online, open book. <coughs> you can access it through the link I send you an email, uh, but you have to complete it within three hours. It's a little more substantial. Uh, and it's also gonna be available during a five day window. Uh, so uh, depending on whatever your finals exam schedule is like, uh, you can pick whatever day on that five in that five day window that you want to work on this uh, class's final exam. But once you start it, you have to submit it within three hours. Um, also, I'll mention uh, the way these uh, online assessments work. You know, if you submit it, you can submit it and then kind of go back and resubmit it if you want to. If you change your answers, as long as you do that within um, the two hour window. Uh, if you go over the two hour window or the three hour, sorry, if you go over the two hour deadline or the three hour deadline for these exams, you will lose points on your exams. And I'll explain in detail how many points you'll lose depending on how late you are over the deadline. Um, that is something I'm trying to replicate from the sort of normal in-person class experience you'd get for doing an exam where you'd have to turn in the exam at the end of the class period. Uh, so pay attention to that because it's something I take seriously. Um, and it's, not fun when you lose points for a reason like that as well. Um, so I'm not gonna say anything further about that at the moment other than just keep that in mind. The final exam will not be cumulative. Uh, so basically there's two exams. The midterm focuses most on what we talk about at the beginning of the semester and the final exam talks about most or addresses what we talk about um, in the second half of the semester. Um, so just keep that in mind. Although there are some topics in the second half of the semester, which won't make sense unless you remember some of the things we talked about the first half of the semester. So it does kind of fit together that way. You can't just completely forget everything you learned the first few weeks and then move on. I do want you to remember some of this stuff as you go through life. Okay. Um, also, little practical note, if you are ill or cannot take an exam due to a personal emergency during the scheduled time for the exam, please let me know as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, final grades will be assigned according to the scale below. Um, yeah, I, as far as this is growing up, we didn't use scales like this in, in the U.S. Uh, so for me, uh, oh, I'm, in, I'm American originally from the state of Minnesota. I think I haven't explained that yet. But um, yeah, that'll probably come up a few times as we go through this class. But I moved to Canada 15 years ago and found that uh, in Canada, their uh, university classes tend to use a more forgiving grading scale. So uh, for us, an A minus bottomed out at 90% and a B minus bottomed out at 80 and C minus is at 70. It was kind of like organized by 10 percents that way. Uh, I tried using that sort of grading scale in my Canadian classes when I started out here, but people did not like it at all. So uh, this is a more forgiving grading scale. And in fact, if you for that reason, if you don't like this grading scale, you think it's too harsh, I don't want to hear it because um, <laughs> I've already made it nicer for you. Uh, and if you really have concerns, um, come to office hours uh, and we can get you graded up in a better way that way. Uh, okay, so um, resources. There is a textbook for this class. Um, I've got an older edition here, which is kind of markered up on the cover um, and looks like this on the inside. Uh, there's also a... Um, a study guide that goes along with this, which is, so this is Contemporary Linguistic Analysis and Introduction by William O'Grady and John Archibald. This is the seventh edition. Um, this is the eighth edition of the study guide. Uh, I've listed the ninth edition here in the recommended text. If you get an older version of this textbook, that should probably work just fine. Um, I don't know how much further back you wanna go back than the seventh, um, maybe the sixth, but they're basically the same they're slightly updated in each new edition. 
Um, uh, but basically what I'll say about this is this is recommended. I used to require it, um, but you can probably get by fine without it based on all materials I've posted through the lectures and, and whatnot. Um, and also the practice exercises too. And there are additional resources like these past sessions, which can help you out too. There's a lot of help we throw your way, which means that the textbook isn't so crucial anymore. But um, if you don't know what linguistics is right now, if you've never studied linguistics before, uh, I would highly recommend that you get this textbook because um, some of the material can seem very strange and unfamiliar. Uh, and it's kind of a totally new way of looking at language, which is this sort of, you know, really fundamental thing we use every day in our lives, but don't think too deeply about in most cases. So if the class is totally new to you, I definitely look into getting this um, to help you along your way. Uh, I just checked the, the bookstore last week. I kind of got my book order in a bit late, but there are copies of the textbook there for you to use. So by all means, go check that out. There's also uh, a website for it here. Um, and like I said, we have these things called pass sessions, which uh, pass is short for peer assisted study sessions. Uh, and these will be held for the course on a weekly basis. So in addition to having uh, me and two TAs giving you office hours or providing office hours for you to come to, you can also go to these sessions, which um, I've heard a lot of Canadian students uh, kind of refer to as like tutorial sessions, uh, because these sessions will give you a chance to review material presented during lectures each week through a mixture of exercises, games, and discussion. There will be multiple pass sessions held each week um, because there's actually more than one pass coordinator um, because there's more than one linguistic or Ling 201 um, course uh, being offered this semester. Attendance at the sessions is encouraged, but it's optional. The time and place for these sessions will be determined on the basis of student availability and announced at various points throughout the semester. Your student leader for past sessions in this class is uh, Madeline McLean or Maddie McLean. Um, she actually took this class from me four years ago. Uh, that was a fun class. Um, she did well in it and knows where kind of uh, I'm coming from and the way I teach it. So uh, she's a good resource to make use of, I would say. Um, and so if you're having any difficulty with the homeworks or the practice exercises or understanding what the heck is going on, definitely contact her and go to one of these sessions. They help a lot. They're basically um, there to make sure people don't fall through the cracks. There's going to be 120 students in this um, particular uh, section of this class. So there's a lot uh, of people out there, a lot of people who probably haven't heard of linguistics before. So if you're struggling at all, we don't want you to get a bad grade. Uh, and we're looking, uh, we're providing these sorts of resources for you so that you wind up doing well, as well as possible in the course. So make use of them, please. Another resource you could make use of is Verbatim, uh, which is the Student Undergraduate Linguistics Society at the University of Calgary. They have office space in Craigie Hall C, uh, room 209 on the second floor. Uh, so if you um, want to have sort of a one-on-one -on -one tutorial kind of help for homeworks, you can always visit them. In addition to visiting either me or your TAs or going to past sessions, you can also talk to verbatim, verbatimites is what we call them, uh, for homework help um, and just general understanding help. And then in addition to that, they're, um, they do social events. So they offer fun and free events for linguistic students. There's also lounge space. They have a library full of uh, linguistics books, uh, including one of these. Um, and then they can, uh, yeah, and much more. So they, you can meet and interact with a group of like-minded students who can give help and advice for questions about linguistics courses or degrees. Um, Many verbatimites are majoring in linguistics and, you know, know a little bit about uh, where you can go with linguistics after you finish your university experience, so on and so forth. There's a lot of different ways you can go with it. Um, they uh, have an email address at verbatim at ucalgary.ca. They also have a Discord server uh, and they also um, regularly post to their Instagram um, account uh, at, at U of C verbatim. So you can check out any one of those different avenues for getting in touch with them to find out more. Um, okay, so I have a bit here about technology requirements, which uh, we were required to put in our course outlines during the pandemic, uh, where everybody needed to have a computer to access um, the class experience, basically. Uh, if you're doing this in person, you don't necessarily need to have all of this stuff. 
uh, but you will need uh, the ability to access this course website in some fashion because that's where I'm going to post things like homework exercises um, and you know exam links and so well exams will come through the, your email but so on and so forth if you want to see any of the videos or the lecture notes or so on and so forth you will need a computer <clears throat> there's a link on here about research participation I'll click on that um, I'm an admin for this so it's going to look a little bit different for me than it does for you but there is a bonus credit option uh, that we supply in this class um, which ideally benefits you and it benefits us and it's kind of a win-win situation for everybody but basically from your perspective is that you can earn extra course credit through the experiential learning slash critical thinking program so this is an optional bonus component that can add up to four percent to your final grade the educational objective of this component of the course is to provide students with an introduction to contemporary research in the field of linguistics so you can complete this component in one of two ways uh, either by participating in ongoing research studies in a linguistics program at the university or by completing a one-page article evaluation from a designated list uh, or by a combination of these two options so uh, research participation is something accessed through this website that i just um, clicked on here a second ago uh, so you would go to this website to create a participant account uh, i'm not going to do it for myself because again it kind of looks differently for um, me than it does for you but you can go just request account here and move on from there it works like any other account based system you'd see on the internet um, and then once you have an account you can log in uh, and then you will see studies that uh, are active that semester um, and that you can sign up for um, depending on usually there's uh, some sort of criteria you, you might have to worry about like are you native language uh, native speaker of the language being studied or so on and so forth but if you do participate in a study then you can earn one percent credit uh, for that study which means that you can basically participate in up to four studies per semester depending on availability um, and then each study after you complete it will be followed by a brief educational debriefing experience to tell you what it was about um, yeah, so we can't always guarantee that studies will be available, but usually there's um, at least two or three out there for you to work with. Uh, so if you want to participate, I recommend that you look for those studies early in the term and frequently check them for open time slots. The last day uh, during the semester in which you can participate in studies is December 7th this year, 2022. If you don't want to participate in studies or if you... Um, would rather just simply have a different kind of experience or there aren't enough for you to fill your four percent you can also complete this course component by reading and evaluating short research articles from various sub-disciplines in the field of linguistics each time you do this you don't get one percent you actually get two percent credit uh, because it involves a little bit more work um, than just going through um, a short linguistics experiment uh, experiment so you get two percent credit for each acceptable evaluation so what you're going to do is you're going to read um, a relatively short research paper uh, about linguistics and when you're an intro student and just starting out um, some of these may not be completely comprehensible you should be able to get the gist of it though and sort of report your basic understanding of the article in a short evaluation so you have to write something up in this case um, a list of reviewable articles will be posted each section's D2L page during the semester. So that's something that you will get through D2L, not on the regular course website. And the D2L module will also provide a form that students can uh, fill out in completing their article reviews. Actually, not can fill out, but must fill out in completing your article reviews. Uh, so you have to basically just list the article review, the research area of the article, which subdiscipline it comes from, and then answer a series of four critical thinking questions on the content of the article. Uh, yeah, so it takes a little bit of time, but not that much. Um, the other kind of caveat to that is that you can submit only one evaluation per due date. Um, the first one is on October 18th, and the second is on December 7th, just to kind of like space it out during the semester. Uh, so if you want to do that at the beginning of the semester, make sure you get it in by October 18th, which is, uh, I think, the uh, in the 7th week of the semester so right in the middle you can also combine these so you could say do two experiments and then one article review or one article review and one experiment so on and so forth however when, however you want to mix and match it to get to that four percent but there's a limit of four percent credit you can earn this way um, and if you have questions about that the person contact is angeliki 
Athana Supulu, uh, one of our professors in the program, she is in charge of that requirement across all sections. Okay, so I'm not gonna say anything further about that other than you can access the research participation through um, the course website and then the critical thinking evaluations through the D2L site. Okay, this is a course schedule. Uh, I'm basically getting close to wrapping this up. Uh, sorry if it's been a bit wordy. Uh, but this is what we're going to talk about throughout the semester. Um, I will say uh, kind of one thing about this because I kind of talked about the basic structure of this already. Um, but I kind of approach this class slightly differently from other instructors in our program. We talk about big picture stuff for the first couple of weeks, basically what language is and how it fits into the natural world. So it gets into some topics of uh, so other communication systems in the animal world that are not language. Um, so we do that for a couple of weeks just to kind of get our bearings before we talk about the technical nuts and bolts of how language works. Um, and when we do that, the first topic we talk about is morphology, which is word structure, which I think is kind of the easiest for beginning students to understand because it um, talks about things like prefixes and suffixes and, you know, combining words into bigger words and so on and so forth and nouns and verbs, things you might have heard, at, heard about before um, out in the world at large. Uh, other uh, instructors get into um, topic of phonetics, which is the uh, study of speech sounds first. Uh, there's a fair amount of technical detail that go into goes into phonetics, um, which involves a fair amount of memorization. Uh, and that can be a bit harder. Uh, so we save that for a bit later, but we need this in order to talk about um, other elements of language structure, like phonology, how sounds pattern in a language. Uh, and then eventually by the end of the semester, we get into syntax, which is basically the study, study of sentence structure. Uh, and then semantics at the very end, which is the study of meaning structure, um, how words derive their meanings and how those meanings combine in sentences. Okay, so that's kind of the basic plan of action for the entire semester. Um, there's a lot to cover. Um, and uh, if you are new, it can seem a bit bewildering or maybe even overwhelming at times. So I would highly encourage you to make use of all these resources we are giving you, um, sending your way. Like, you know, even reviewing the videos on YouTube, if you've been in class or looking at the lecture notes or talking to the TAs or past leaders or what have you. There's a lot of help we want to give you because we want to make sure you do well in this class. Um, there's a bit here at the tail end um, about, uh, which is boilerplate stuff that we all have to put into our course outlines. Um, but there's, uh, so I'm not going to go through all this because you've probably seen it before. Um, there's a bit here at the tail end about um, using devices in class. Like I said, if you are in person in class, I'd rather you not use uh, devices or not be staring at your um, phones or what have you. Uh, basically, if you do bring in a device, I'm okay with that as long as it's class related. So I know a lot of people like to take notes on their laptops or what have you when um, they're uh, just sitting in class, or even if you just wanna use your phone to take a picture of what I'm writing on the board. Uh, I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is you doing something not class related on your devices, cause that's just bad. So if that's the case, I'd rather just not even be there. Um, with that in mind, I'm going to point out um, for some of the lecture notes, um, or generally speaking, in lecture notes, I will post them ahead of time. I mean, all the all the video lectures are up there on YouTube. You can watch them anytime you want, so that's not going to change. Um, but the um, with lecture notes, I'm actually going to post um, sort of filtered lecture notes ahead of time. So sometimes in the lectures, I will pose questions uh, in the lecture slides and then wait for you to answer them. Uh, uh, before class, I'm not gonna post the answers to those questions, but after class, I will go back and post the answers within the lecture notes uh, in case you need those as a reference. And if you're really you know, dedicated, you could, I presume, you know, watch the entire lecture before you see it in class. Um, might be unusual, but in that case, you'll know the answer. So I guess just don't tell everybody else uh, until the appropriate time. If, if you do that. Uh, I will say as well, there are some practice exercise videos here. Um, like I think, I didn't talk about, yeah, I talked about these practice exercises. So uh, I, if you can see here, I set that to private. So those walk you through the answers to the different practice exercises. So you won't see those videos online until um, after we walk through them in class. So if you're doing this all online, you will have to wait for a few things um, that only emerge um, online after they've been done in person in class, just so you know. Um, 
And lastly, there's a bit here about um, integrity and academic misconduct. So I just, I don't want to dwell on this in detail, um, but uh, I would recommend that you read through this. And in particular, um, don't plagiarize other people's work uh, if you're submitting it for homework. Um, because uh, if you do that, I will have to refer you um, up to the registrar uh, who will evaluate your case and determine whether you get credit for it or not. Uh, it's an ugly and unpleasant situation for everybody involved. And I'll just say, if you submit anything with the expectation of getting credit for it, you need to do that work on your own for this class and everything else uh, you study at the university. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. And I hope I will have no problems with that um, because I'm trying to make this uh, as accessible and as fun as and as informative for everybody as possible this year uh and like i said it's going to be a bit of an experiment i don't know exactly how it's going to turn out but i think it'll be a better class than it's ever been before so i'm looking forward to it okay enough talking for this like uh video we're going to start learning about linguistics in the next one so i'll see you there